Hi, hi, Kalai. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How about you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. So, can you please tell about yourself? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, myself, Mahesh. I'm uh, currently working in this Infosys. Uh, where I know I'm totally. I'm having around eight plus years of experience in cloud and Kubernetes. Uh, currently, I'm looking for a change in dedicated Kubernetes project. That's why I approached to this uh, interview. Uh, in addition to that, in overall eight, year, eight years of experience, past uh, two and a half year, right? I'm working with the uh, uh, Kubernetes project at present. So this is about uh, myself. Uh, Fine, fine. I guess so. Could you please tell me about the uh, Kubernetes architecture on your project? Yeah, uh, yeah, basically generic way if you take Kubernetes architecture, uh, uh, we'll have a master node and we'll have a worker node. It kind of a cluster mechanism uh, where master node is uh, taking care of all the administration related part and worker node will be uh, responsibility about uh, how these things are getting happen in the end uh, system. Okay, so in my project, uh, we have hosted our cluster. You no, know, earlier it was you know two three years before uh, when I before joining this project, it was on premises. Later they have migrated to uh, AWS uh, based uh, Kubernetes. Uh, literally, you no, know, EKS Elastic Kubernetes Service. Uh, currently we have a uh, all the clusters you know are running under uh, aws uh, platform only uh, literally here master node has been taken care by aws so we don't have worry to managing the master node only uh, we have a worker node to manage each cluster somewhere around uh, four to five uh, worker nodes will be there uh, we'll be uh, maintaining and uh, monitoring all these uh, worker nodes and uh, checking the utilization of uh, all these worker node and uh, maintaining part and deployment all the configurations right we'll taking care of it uh, currently our uh, cluster is based upon uh, aws uh, environment this is about my current architecture fine so what is your roles and responsibility in your current project okay so uh, I, we used to taking care of this uh, kubernetes cluster end to end uh, when customer wants to provision a new cluster uh, we'll be deploying them through cloud formation or terraform uh, from the setting of the cluster uh, once the cluster is setting up right we have uh, some more existing clusters available for kubernetes a client will be creating a ticket in our ticketing tool we use uh, jira uh, for uh, maintaining our tickets or also client will be sending their new, uh, requirement over email also so whenever uh, we get a request, right, something, my roles and responsibility will be in our project. I will be always proactively monitoring the ticketing tool. Client will be asking to set up a new uh, deployment. Okay, uh, we need to configure their uh, ingress or client will be asking me to set up an ingress controller or they wanted to, you know, uh, asking some applications is not uh, working and I need to check for the status of the application, whichever hosted in the pod. And uh, they will ask me to create a new service uh, or they will uh, uh, they'll ask me to share some information about the YAML file, whatever we have in the uh, GitHub. Okay, so, and uh, we do have a, a requirement to create a new image, uh, whatever the developers used to give the URL with updated uh, source code. So we used to uh, uh, build the image and we'll keep the image in ECR, AWS ECR. And uh, sometime, right, we may get some uh, requirement uh, uh, to work with uh, volumes also. Okay, then customers are uh, uh, asking us to create a new volume or uh, they wanted to ask for existing uh, detail, anything, right? We need to bring that up. Uh, so this is uh, what uh, overall my roles and responsibility and sometime we'll have to work with helm also some people to be doing a helm kind of deployment and uh, installing some packages updating packages uh, helm chart related so this is the overall you know it, it depends there are a lot i just uh, whatever currently in my mind i just conveyed you fine okay so what is the last issue you have faced in your project Mm, if you ask me about last issue, mostly we will be uh, uh, getting a new requirement. Yeah, of course, uh, issues uh, will be facing many, but I'll tell you the one recently what I faced. So recently, uh, my customer, customer has a requirement to provision a ingress rule. Okay, already ingress controller is in place. So when we try to create an ingress rule for their new requirement, right? Uh, deployment is creating, service is creating. Uh, but at the time of ingress rule creation, right, it is failing, uh, says my uh, uh, API version is uh, not available for the ingress controller. So, but existing ingress, everything is working fine. And same YAML only, uh, usually whenever we got a request, same YAML only, we will be using it uh, for every time uh, ingress rule creation. 
Uh, that time we struggled a lot. We have uh, uh, removed the, uh, we have in our test environment, so we have created a new uh, uh, test uh, setup. Uh, we have created the ingress over there also facing the same issue. We have surprised the same uh, configuration file only usually we will use. Later, uh, upon checking by removing the AWS uh, uh, ingress controller and we have recreated and we have recreated the service account and we have, you know, uh, we have reprovisioned the IDLC provider. Everything still we are facing a uh, same issue. Later only we have identified uh, API has been updated. The ingress rule API has been updated from the uh, Kubernetes end. Uh, that the API, you know, uh, which was not uh, compatible with the ingress controller what we have in our cluster. Uh, so because the version what we are using API version in the cluster, right? That is uh, uh, beta one. Now recently uh, Kubernetes has been upgraded uh, their uh, uh, actual version of uh, ingress controller. Uh, that due to that incompatibility, right? We struggled a lot and to identify the issue. So later, uh, what we have done, uh, we have upgraded our ingress uh, controller uh, using Helm. Uh, once we have done, right? Then we have created an ingress. So we have provided that as a root cause analysis says uh, existing uh, ingress controller is something outdated. A beta version has been no more. We can directly use the current uh, version. Uh, so this is what the RCA we have and the issue what we have faced recently to in our project. Uh, this is the major one. Okay, that's good. So, how was uh, AWS Fargate cluster differ from other type of AWS? Sorry, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so Fargate uh, uh, generally uh, Fargate is kind of a uh, uh, serverless. Okay, mostly people for easiest uh, container management and all people in AWS they will use Fargate, but uh, nowadays. AWS um, extended their uh, functionality. Even Fargate can be used for uh, EKS cluster, I mean, Kubernetes cluster provision also. As I said, initially, when it has come to on-prem cluster, uh, all the master node, worker node, everything will be managed by the uh, service team. Uh, when we are migrated to AWS EKS, right? Uh, here somewhat, you know, uh, master node will be taken care by AWS. We are responsible only to manage a worker node. Uh, so in that case, right? Uh, when come to Fargate, uh, the, the beauty about Fargate is all about uh, when I'm having a master node as well as worker node, everything AWS will take care of it. Literally, they are calling it as a serverless. Only our responsibility is to manage the application, part deployment service volumes, ingress, ingress controller, Helm, Helm charts, everything. That is only our duty. Backend node, cluster based resources, right? Everything uh, AWS will take care. That is a major difference and advantage of Fargate cluster. So could you please tell me about uh, volumes management in Kubernetes? Uh, sure. Uh, Kubernetes uh, providing always, you know, dynamic and static uh, way of uh, volume configuration for our uh, part. Okay. Uh, we do have option, uh, you know, uh, it, it is all depends on the customer's requirement only. I'll tell you whatever uh, my exposure. Uh, we have an empty directory that is a basic type of uh, volume. I mean, from my local machine, right? Any, any, any one of my cluster node, my part will be getting the volume space. Okay. My empty directory is a temporary kind of, okay. It's because one my, once my part is failures, right? Obviously my data also, I will not be able to access it. If you have any critical or I know credential or certificate file, you can use uh, empty directory. Remaining if you go to static and all, you know, uh, we have static and dynamic provisioning uh, in Kubernetes volume management. Uh, even uh, we have, you know, uh, EBS volume, we can create it. We can map it to the concern uh, worker node. That volume directly, we can map it to a uh, pod, inside the pod. That also possible. Everything we need to write a YAML file in such a way. Whenever we create a YAML file, first we'll specify the, you know, uh, kind, uh, metadata, and, uh, you know, version, API version. Uh, when come to the specification part, we'll be specifying an option to mount. In down, uh, down we'll have an option for uh, volume management. Uh, or there only we'll specify about my volume types, empty directory or static or dynamic, whatever uh, based upon my record, I'll specify over that. So it'll it'll uh, it'll it'll prefer my EBS volume. I can specify my EBS volume ID. I can also in the same YAML file uh, mounting place. I can mount it in any location. That is one way of provisioning. Uh, predominantly in our project, right? What we are following, we'll have a EFS, okay, Elastic File Share, uh, which has been service provided by AWS. That EFS storage will be created volume will be mapped with all my cluster nodes. Okay. From there, host host path method, we are getting the volumes and we are it's it's dynamic actually. There is no limitation in size when you come to EFS. Uh, we'll be mounted with my worker node. 
from my part right when i am writing a yaml file i'll be specifying host path so from the efs right there will be one particular path it will be mounted to my pod uh, so from the pod i'll be managing all my volumes and all uh, backup for this volume if efs level itself i'll directly taking using aws backup service uh, that is also possible uh, the advantage about this method methodology right even though my pod dies still i'll be able to mount this volume to my upcoming uh, pod so my uh, volume uh, life cycle will be really good Uh, this is how uh, we'll make sure the high availability and the uh, volume management in our current project okay so how the ingress ml file structure could you please uh, elaborate about it and also its annotations yeah basically uh, when you take any ml file there will be a, some mandatory component will be there something like timed uh, metadata and something like uh, api versions uh, okay so even ingress also will start in same way only uh, the pre requirement for ingress is all about uh, we need to have the ingress controller should be there in my place in my cluster it should be there because without ingress controller uh, we cannot configure ingress so the structure about ingress right we'll have a uh, annotations where we can specify whether uh, my ingress rule where it should point to uh, either it's a load balancer uh, application load balancer or what it is and uh, we have to specify if we want we can specify the ssl certificate related uh, ar and information and http and http redirects okay and coming to the specification right we we'll have to specify the host path the domain name should be for example uh, uh, test dot you know uh, kubernetes.com test1.kubernetes.com according to my sub page of my application right the respective uh, yeah, specific uh, path will be specified and down to it uh, down below to the path host path whatever it is we will give the service name also so whenever the request comes first it will come to my cluster cluster will forward to uh, ingress controller uh, ingress controller will check uh, all my ingress rule how it's been configured based upon it it will forward to the service back end of the service some pod or some deployment should be there it will be uh, you know responding to the users request this is the flow actually Uh, this is uh, what all about ingress structure and uh, the communication flow in kubernetes cluster and my guess so i'm done with my part thank you so if anything uh, get back to you okay thank you